Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and I am... I I'm at a loss for words, clearly. No, but in all honesty, I am extremely excited for today's video because I'm actually going to be making over a space that I kind of did a miniature makeover on when I did my full kitchen. And I kind of put my kitchen and my breakfast nook hand in hand together, so you guys might be able to tell exactly what this video makeover is. Well, you probably could from the title. So yeah, I'm gonna be working on my breakfast nook makeover today, which I am so excited about. When I first did this space, all I really did to the breakfast nook was just paint the window trim black. I left every everything else in their white, simple, and I really didn't decorate or add too much personality to that space because I did an extremely bold wallpaper on the front and I got over that lemon wallpaper, you guys, so quickly. I bet you within a month of having that wallpaper up, I was just overlooking at it. So we needed to change that. I'm so excited to say that today's video is also sponsored by Lowe's, which is just ex a major because I absolutely love Lowe's. It's one of my favorite stores to shop at when it comes to like construction materials or any sort of like power tool, whatever I need, I'm always shopping at Lowe's. But if you guys have never seen their Weekender series, it is being rebooted and I got the opportunity to host in the first episode with Monica Mangan, you guys. It was so much fun. I just gotta give you a little rundown. If you've never seen The Weekender on Lowe's YouTube channel, it was a series they had a while back, and these are full-on makeovers, you guys. And they're makeovers similar to my channel, very budget-friendly, do-it-yourself, attainable projects, but for real people. And they do them at such high production. Like, these videos are so incredibly fun to watch. I used to watch The Weekender all the time, and then it went off air, and I was like, Lowe's, where's The Weekender? And then I got an email saying that it was coming back, and they wanted me to be a co-host on an episode. Like, that is so crazy, and it was so much fun fun, you guys. I got a shoot with Lowe's for two days for the episode. We did a makeover in a couple's home. Their names are Bess and Marcellus, and they were absolutely incredible, and this was such a fun makeover. This was really the first time I got to work with another designer or work with someone, and we had such a great time working on this makeover. It flew by, you guys, and the space turned out absolutely incredible. So if you have not checked out The Weekender over on Lowe's channel, I'm going to link it below for you because it is a 100% priority. I took away so much inspo from the episode and I'm actually going to be utilizing a bunch of the techniques that we used in the episode in today's breakfast nook just to kind of transform over because I loved some of the stuff I saw and that we utilized in that space and I want them in my own home. And I was also extremely inspired by Lowe's new Origin 21 line. If you guys have not seen that collection, it is modern and approachable projects for your home and they really have absolutely everything from lighting to furniture to decor and so much more. So I think honestly guys, we got to jump in and get started with this makeover because there is a lot to work on. Hello guys! It is the first day of our refresh in the kitchen slash breakfast nook. I'm watching a cat crawl on my car at the moment. And we are of course in the kitchen. As you guys can see, it is a little bit later at the moment. It's currently 4.45 because I spent a lot of the morning actually shopping for supplies at Lowe's, which of course I'll share with you as I work on the process. But something that I want to actually start in here today is getting up our picture frame molding on the wall. Now I'm planning on doing picture frame molding throughout the entire breakfast nook here, which I've never done before. I've never actually done real picture frame molding where you cut it from the molding. I have done pre-done molding, which was definitely easier, but I'm going to share with you guys how to do picture frame molding on your wall and I swear too that this could be semi rental friendly but as you guys know my landlord really lets me do whatever in here which is so nice now something you guys that's quite nice about doing the picture frame molding in here is that we do have windows so it kind of gives us already a starting point to where we want to do the molding and what I'm thinking is one more molding a uh, square in the center here so in the center of the windows and then three across the top so one above this window this window and then one above the center and same thing mimicked on the bottom and then I'm going to go ahead and figure out the opposite wall over here once we have this one done but I'm going to start on this wall. So to cut our chair rail molding, I actually got this tool here. It's called a miter shear. And this is traditionally used for like plastic molding or thinner materials, but I found that if you do two cuts on it, so like basically we're gonna need to create our first angled cut here anyways. So I'm just gonna line it up on the angle there and just do a press down, our first press. Or that one went all the way through. Sometimes they don't, sometimes the wood's a little harder and what you just have to do is remove it and then just go the opposite way and cut it again and you're good. But I just feel like it's so much easier than having to go cut every single one with a miter saw. So then we'll go to create our other angle, which we want it to be 
point it inwards like this. Now it takes a little force to wiggle it out, but once you get it out, you can just go from the opposite direction and just create the cut from that side as well once you flip it over and you're gonna have your little piece of trim cut perfectly for you. And I transferred this to the wall and used a small level just to ensure my horizontal bottom piece was in the correct spot and nice and level because that will actually give you the alignment for your vertical pieces as well. And I just used a nail gun to attach those. So I kind of wanted to share with you guys why I thought this could be rental friendly because this is the size of nail and I'm only doing three max nails for the longer sections and then I only use two on the bottom. But if you could picture it, you can totally pull this off when you were to leave because the nails are only an inch long and just patch up the hole behind it. So if you wanted to do picture frame molding, I do feel like you can get away with it rental friendly if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this first little frame section here. All right, let's go. Earlier I mentioned that I was going to do three frames on top and three frames on the bottom, but then I decided to change up my molding style, which I think is really fun. Molding something that you can definitely play around with. It doesn't have to be by the books at all. And I ended up just doing like a straight line border on the top of our windows and then on the bottom of our windows, I just spaced it about five inches from the window trim and just nailed it on the wall, just like I did with the other pieces of molding. Good morning. This morning I went ahead and finished up all of the trim work. All I had to do was just get a couple more trim boards which she picked up and I applied to the top and bottom of this left side. So all of our trim work is completely done. I do need to go through and fill the nail holes. Totally forgot about that. But I did also go through and already fill in some of the cracks between the molding which was super easy. I used some wood filler for that. And then we're going to get to painting what you guys, we have the paint, I have yet to share with you the colors. You might have seen some samples on the table, but I'm gonna share the paint in just a second. Gonna fill the nail holes first, and then we can get to prepping the paint. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and remove the black tape. If you guys remember, I did these electrical tape like hacks on the window frames to make them look black. So now we are talking about paint colors for the space. Instantly I was gravitating towards yellow. I've never done a yellow space before and it just seemed really fun to do a yellow space. So I grabbed these swatches, but after kind of looking at them and thinking about it for a while, I opted actually for a blue tone. And the blue color I'm going to go for is this one right here. It is called Trade Wind Blue. And this is what that looks like on the wall and I'm very excited. I think the molding is gonna look so beautiful with the blue on it as well. And I just wanna start getting this color up on the wall. Guys, this Valspar paint formula is insane. Like, it will give you, like, I'm not kidding you, one coat over the top of black. Like, there's no streaks at all. Like, we're gonna only have to do one coat on this entire nook, and it is just absolutely crazy. I actually used the same Valspar paint in the horror movie room when I redid it, and I sprayed it, and I used a dark color and only had to do one coat. Like, this is my favorite formula of paint. This would not be a Drew Scott Lone Fox video if I didn't change the paint color. So the paint color's changing. 
let me give you guys a rundown. So I just want to show you what it looks like outside when you see the archway and then what the color looks like when you're inside. Now when you're in here, I like the color so much more. It's like a lighter kind of blue, a little bit softer. It's not as pungent and like in your face, but when you leave out of here and look into the archway, it is so like just bright, almost like a Tiffany blue color, and it just isn't the exact vibe I'm wanting for here. I really thought it was gonna work perfectly, you guys, but I think if I was to choose this color again, I'd go with something a little bit more gray-toned and a little lighter. The color is still beautiful nonetheless, and the paint worked amazing, so of course, it's just a selection error. So I'm going with this color. This new shade here is called Smoke Infusion, and I really wanted to still kind of have something a little bit bluish, a little bit green, so this is like an in-between of like a blue-green shade, a bit more neutral, and I still think it's gonna be nice and bright and just kind of cheery in this space, so we're gonna use Smoke Infusions in here and do one coat. Normally, I have to do two coats of paint anyways, so you know what? I'm just gonna call this my second coat and pretend like I didn't even do the first one. You've probably never seen me in a tank top before because it's never that hot here. Well, that's a lie. It's hot in LA all the time, but normally I never wear these because I'm a little self-conscious, but I decided to today anyway, so I am. We're building a dining table out here, you guys. Painting is being done upstairs. Marie's actually upstairs painting currently. Marie? Hey, girl! How's the painting? How's it going? <laughs> So while Marie's painting our new color up in the breakfast nook, I'm actually gonna start constructing the table in here. And I'm super excited because I actually am gonna be creating like a round breakfast nook, fluted, dark, walnut stained table. And I've seen a bunch of DIYs kind of of this fluted table, but I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of make my own rendition of it. I have this idea in my head. It seems pretty simple and easy. And I really want an easy build table for this room. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share with you guys the supplies. For this table build, I picked up 22 of these one inch wide dowels and they're six feet long so I was able to get two cuts from each dowel and then I also picked up two of these 15 inch round wood pieces that are in the same section as the dowels and the first thing I did was just cut down all my dowels to 28 inches in length and I was able to get two 28 inch sections per one dowel so in the end we ended up with 44 dowels. Also cut down a two by four to the same height of 28 inches and this is going to be our center support beam that's going to make the process of attaching the dowels so much easier so I made sure that all the dowels fit and for the base of the table I'm going to be securing our wood round to the two by four so we're gonna be adding one on each side and just make sure that your two by four is pretty much in the center and I just did a little roll test outside to make sure that the rounds were pretty symmetrical and they definitely were. And now comes the pretty repetitive part. The two by four is gonna act as a perfect spacer for us to insert our dowels from the side. So I just slid the dowel in from the side and used a two and a half inch long nail in my brad nailer. And I just went straight through the top, adding two nails to every single dowel. You can even do three or four if you'd like, but two worked perfectly and ensure to also flip it over after you add your dowel so that you can secure it from the top as well. Make sure to do brad nails through the top and bottom so your dowel's nice and sandwiched. And I actually got this idea because because in Bess and Marcellus's space for The Weekender, we did a really, really cool slat wall, which you guys have to check out. And I wanted to recreate a little bit of that look in my breakfast nook. So I thought this kind of gave it the look of the slatting, but more in a rounded kind of pretty version, which I think is perfect for the breakfast nook. And I also have to mention that these dowels are adding so much extra support to the base of our table. It's not just a two by four holding it up. There are a ton of dowels around the outside as well. We have our base, our fluted round base, and it looks Perfect, seriously perfect. So happy I had that spare two by four that I put in the middle and then I just nailed the dowels on the outside. It is sturdy, you guys, like it's not going anywhere at all. So now what I'm gonna do is actually stain this before adding the top. And I'm going to be using this stain here from Lowe's. It's the special walnut minwax stain. I love walnut toned wood and I really think a dark table will look so beautiful in that space. So we're gonna give a coat of that with a stain brush. Believe it or 
not, you can actually purchase pre-made round tabletops from Lowe's. This is a 36 inch round tabletop and that just cuts out a whole step of having to cut one out and sand it. So what I did was I just measured in from the edge 12 inches so I could find the center of that table. And then on the underside of our base, I just screwed on these little stoppers so they wouldn't, you know, like damage the floor. And then last but not least, we are going to secure the top of our table or the tabletop that I got onto our base. So I used some Gorilla Glue construction adhesive from Lowe's and I just piped a bunch of that on there, let it kind of cure for about 30 minutes or so, and then went in and started staining the top as well with the same exact walnut stain. Day four of our breakfast nook makeover. And you guys, today everything is coming along. I already got to work a little bit this morning because I have been so indecisive about what I'm doing to the arch. As you guys know, previously it had a lemon wallpaper on it. It was super, super bold, but I am genuinely so obsessed with the molding that we did on the inside and how beautiful it looks that I kind of was gonna add a wallpaper first. That was my first intention. But as I kind of started looking at wallpaper options and stuff, I just really felt like it took away from the molding and the color on the inside of the breakfast nook. So what I'm going to be doing instead, or what I've already done, is paint it darker. So I actually went ahead and grabbed that paint swatch card and went two shades darker than the one that I did, which I think the first one was Smoke Infusions. The color is actually the center one here. It is called Coastal Dusk. It's so pretty. It's kind of like a more muted turquoise, like an unsaturated turquoise tone. And I went ahead and painted that on the entire archway, but I didn't go all the way up to the edge because I actually decided to do a fun little detail. Since we weren't doing a pattern on the wallpaper, I was like, why don't we add a stripe to the underside of the arch? And all I'm doing is taking painter's tape, putting it right across. So this actually blends into the color here. And then this is gonna blend into the color on the front. So I think it's gonna be a very visually graphic kind of look. And I just Went ahead and kind of tested it on this side here simply just spacing them out by the width of a tape so i'll put a tape down then i'll put one as a spacer put another piece and then remove the spacer and continue the process down and so that's what i did here and i actually quite like it because when you're from the front it's pretty subtle but then from the side, it just adds the slightest bit of detail, which I think is so fun. It is a little quirky, but I'm hoping with the styling and all the additional elements, I can kind of tone down the quirkiness of it and have it more as a design detail. So I'm gonna continue this throughout the top and share with you guys kind of how I did it. Like I kind of mentioned, I used the tape itself as a spacer. So that's just the width of my stripes. And once I had all of my tapes added on. I went in with a paintbrush and the original wall color just to paint over the top of all those edges. That's going to make a really, really clean, crisp line once we add on our statement color. Removing all those pieces of tape to reveal our nice, clean lines. And then I went back through and just kind of edged out all the rest of the front there to ensure it was nice and clean. The striped archway is done, you guys, and how fun is that addition? It was definitely something I was like, it could lean a little quirky, it could be a little bit too much, kind of circus vibes, but I absolutely love it. I think it is such a fun accent. You can get such cool angles from the space and just adds the tiniest bit of graphic touch, which we eliminated the wallpaper and I'm happy that we did because I love the darker paint. It just frames our new space and I love how the stripe kind of just transfers in and out. It's such a cool element. I'm very, very excited about the rug that I'm putting in this space. This is my first ever vintage rug that I've owned, and I got this at a flea market a while back, and I actually got it for this space. This is a five by five little nook. This is a four by four rug, you guys, and it is from Afghanistan. It is a hand knotted, but also um, the guy told me that it's tufted and knotted, or there's two different types of weaving in this rug, which is really special about it. And I just feel like this is gonna be so pretty in this space. It's a perfect little size for the corner. I feel like this adds a little bit of like a moody element back. Um, and this is gonna be the rug in the space.
To finish off this table, I sealed it with a sealant and I actually used a satin finish because I wanted it to have a little bit of sheen to it and not be super matte. So the satin finish gave it that look and I did three coats of this over the Was entire table. It all just a dream, just all in my head. Floating rivers upstream, the things that you say. Are you absolutely kidding me with this table that we created from Lowe's products? I, I, this is stunning, you guys. And this is the light reflecting on the bottom here. It's all the same tone. It looks perfect in this corner here. And the great thing is, is it's such a small space that we just have two chairs. So the rug is perfect. We're gonna have one chair kind of facing this direction, one chair facing this direction. They're not quite here from Lowe's yet. I think they're gonna arrive tomorrow, but the table is beautiful. I love it in here. chairs they arrived this morning from Lowe's and they couldn't be more perfect first of all they're insanely high quality like these are such pretty chairs uh the fabric's so nice the wood's great it's the same color as the table which was not planned I mean it was but it wasn't because I wasn't sure if they're going to match up but they perfectly do like look how the seat also draws in color from the artwork up there and from our like darker tone in the stripe it's just ideal. It's a perfect, perfect chair. And such a great price point too. Like Lowe's, you guys, they have cute furniture. So what we are doing in here today is just wrapping it up. It really just needs like a little bit of decor. And that's really all we're doing, you guys. So let's get to decoring. I wonder why they didn't just call it decoring instead of decorating. Like why decorating? Why not just decoring, you know? Guys, I just added the last touches to the space, which really were super minimal. I just did a little bit of decor on top of the table and that was all. We got the new chairs this morning from Lowe's. They look incredible and this space, you guys, has had such a makeover. I am so excited to share it with you. I absolutely adore this space and I'm gonna reveal it to you in five, four, three, two and a quarter, two, one, one and three eighths and one and now. <laughs> love the outcome of this space. It is truly perfect. Like, look at the vibes in here, you guys. This space gets so much sunlight. I actually really wanted to add a light fixture up here because the Origin 21 line at Lowe's, you guys, has such cute light fixtures. If you haven't checked out that line as well, I highly suggest you do so. It's very modern. They did such a great job with it. But all around, this makeover just turned out better than I expected. I went a little daring 
with the color, which is something that we did invest in Marcella space as well. We did a little bit of a daring color in there and I wanted to go bold in here and that is exactly what I did. I just love it so much. I feel like these stripes also kind of go back to theirs with the wood slat wall that we did and then the table is just perfection. The chairs, I love it so much. I hope that you guys love it as well. I cannot wait to have breakfast here every single morning. But that is about all for today's video. I have kept you here for long enough. Do not forget to check out The Weekender over on Lowe's YouTube channel and make sure to subscribe over there too because they're coming out with so many episodes, not just the one I'm in. There are a lot more, you guys. So definitely check them out. Watch The Weekender and let me know your guys' thoughts because it's actually a great, great series and there's so many incredible DIY projects you'll find out about within the series. So I'll catch you guys in my next one. I hope you enjoyed this one and I love you all. Bye guys.